once again, welcome back to the plot. Right, well, good afternoon everybody. Once again, welcome back with Plot. I know it's been a it's been a while since I've uh, made a video, but uh, believe you me, it's, you know, it's been really busy this last fortnight. I've never stopped potting off, potting off uh, down home. I've been there uh, most days, uh, trying to get the, the flower unfinished. Uh, petunias, begonias, busy lizzies. Uh, I've got trayfuls of vantarinums. I've still got trayfuls of blue lobelia in there, and it's just trying to catch up. And of course, no. Uh, this time of the year, I'm I'm on with my toms, I've got my tomatoes, I've got trayfuls of tomatoes I've put up. Um, I've got trayfuls of brassicas, if you remember three weeks ago we sowed the brassicas. Just in a cold greenhouse, you don't need anything else. I've seen some horrific sights, um, four and five inches long, some of the brassicas. Uh, it's, and it's, all, it's just lack of light, that's all it is. Um, lack of light and uh, too much heat. I never use heat from your brassicas, but we'll go in there, we'll uh, we'll do the video, we'll start off on the back bench here because uh, as I mentioned in the last video I'm gonna start moving stuff outside. Well of course I brought the um I brought the shallots that I had planted. I got these off uh, Mick next door and uh, he gives a dozen of his shallots that he had off last year and of course once again all I do is just go around Give them a little bit of weed note, but they're, they're first class, ready for plant note. Uh, nice root system on the bottom, bottom's full of root, so they're ready to shift. So I've got them, um, I've got a dozen and a half of them. And of course, then you've got the old drumstick primulas. <laughs> I've got two trifles there, and they're absolutely fantastic, marvellous little plants. And these are just um, sown last autumn, uh, sow the seed in multi cell trays, and then put it on in, in little nine cent six centimetre pots in there. Absolutely marvellous, they go really nice in the border and they'll, uh, they'll double up in size for next year. Quite easy to do. As I say, I like to grow a lot of my um, spring bedding that way, over with them in the polytunnel. I do plant some out in the autumn, uh, pansies and stuff like that, but I always keep a few back in the polytunnel just in case we get any disasters. And of course we can get some really bad heavy winters, so, and that, that uh, takes a toll on the plants. But then, um, and once again, what I mentioned uh, a couple weeks ago, the sweet pea, and there's mine now. They've been out in the back bench here, just in the fresh air. They've got a little bit of plastic on the, on the top of the roof here, just for any heavy rain or heavy snow that we might get. But uh, these have been sitting out the back here in the pine pots, and the, the, the roots out the bottom there, they're full of roots, absolutely fantastic. And you can see where we stopped them, because each one's been branching away. And I stopped them at about two to three inches, and then each one's got a nice little branch on. They've been hard enough for a week now, I'm going to leave them for another week and I'm spot on for timing. I like to plant mine out on about the second, third week in April. So we're not that far away now. It's uh, absolutely cracking plants, um, love them over them. But as I say, they can sit out on the bench here for another uh, <coughs> Sit out on the bench for another week or two. It's, uh, there's no harm, as I say, the, the pots are just filled with roots here now, but uh, they'll go straight out. Put a wig warm up or uh, some canes, runners, netting, whatever you want, and they'll grow away nice and strong. I was going to put some halos on them, a little plant support, and just tie them in, but uh, as I'm putting them out next week anyway, I'll, uh, I'm not going to bother. I'll leave them in front of the air. But I just like to go through the pots, pick out any weeds, any stray weeds that's in there, because it's my own compost. Now that's, that sun is absolutely crazy this afternoon. It's uh, what, about four o'clock now, I think. It's quarter past four in the afternoon. The sun's belting down, but it's been absolutely freezing cold all day. And I think this is the first day we've had where we haven't had any wind. Um, so I've had a delay planting the parsnips. I'm hoping to get the parsnips finished off in the end of this video. Maybe tomorrow afternoon I'll come up and put a couple of rows in. But I want to get cracking on the cuttings and I want to get cracking on the uh, on the brassicas. I've got onions to pot up. I've got all my big onions that's in there, the billy lamb onions. I've got the big large red onions. I've got them to pot up. And it's, you know, it's all go this time of year. So I'm just there. Uh, I'm not gonna be I'm not gonna be stressed about it, I'm not gonna be hurried. I'm just gonna take my time, do what I can when I can. 
Uh, as I say, the work's coming to halt in the in the garden at the moment. We've uh, Roger planted out the main titty bed. We've got three big rows of desiree here, and of course he's been busy in the polytunnels. I'll show you when we go in there. And all all our titties are banked up now. We've got uh, three lots of uh, early potatoes. We've got the Winston in the big greenhouse, and we've got the Jazzy in the lower bottom polytunnel, and they're absolutely romping through. Yeah. For the beginning of April, they're doing really well, and of course, Roger's banked them all up, so they're, they're all banked up. And what I did this morning, I went along with the weepy hoses and stuck canes either side of the weepy hose, so they're right on top of the beds, yeah, they're right on top of the peaks. So maybe next week we can connect them all up and then turn the tap on, and it waters every bed at the same time, nice and slow. I can get, even let it run overnight just on a, on a half pressure, and it'll just drip away all night. Come in the morning when Roger comes in first thing, turns it off, and of course all the beds are lovely and soaked. What I did do through the week Wednesday, I started feeding the strawberries as, as I mentioned in the last video. They've had their first feed, uh, and they're really looking great. They're, they're really nice and healthy. Uh, what I'm going to do for next week, I'm going to make a spray up. This will be in next week's video. I'll make a spray up, and we'll start with the strawberries. We'll give them a nice spraying and feeding once a week. That's all I need. Mine, uh, with making my own compost up for the baskets, they should be great in them. Yeah. That, that, there's no problems, there's no dying, leaves dying off or anything. So they're, they're not uh, they're not suffering at all. They're getting all the feed they want in the baskets. But if you want to start feeding them, just a light tomato feed will do. Uh, just general fertiliser that you can get in pots, watered down, and that's all I use. Or if you've got comfrey in the barrels, uh, comfrey is just starting to come through there now, it's just starting to grow. But uh, later on in the springtime, on the summer, you can crush a few leaves up, put it in the water, and you get a nice black juice, and that's great for um, great for feeding your strawberries. Uh, seaweed fertilizer, uh, seaweed out the um, you can get the pots of it now. You can tip it in your water. That's another good one, absolutely first class. As long as it's full of potash, uh, and that's what you want for your fruiting. Wait until you. I've got some of them just starting to branch out there now. Uh, once the fruit comes on them, and then we'll feed them twice a week then. Not until just all I'm doing now is just give them a little bit, pick me up just to keep them going, taking over until they start branching out, they get the fruit stems on, and then we'll be feeding them twice a week. But uh, as I say, where the sun's out, I'll uh, have a little, little wander around out here. So I'll uh, get inside and we might take a couple of dealer cuttings in the big polytunnel because there's plenty in there to be taken at the moment, and then we'll get up and we'll get some of them mere brassicas planted. Okay? Okay. Right, it's a, it's a wee bit warmer in here, so I've, uh, I've managed to take my jacket off. Uh, it's inside the melon house. And of course, the, uh, a little bit of sunshine outside, it makes, it makes all that difference. It's absolutely red hot in here now. Uh, it's 72, <laughs> so I need the doors open, I need the winds open, get this fresh in. But as you can see up on the top here, um, where I started the tomatoes, I've got there. Uh, Trayfuls of plum tomatoes on here. I've got, um, I've got all the busy lizzies. I've got all the petunias. Um, I've got the begonias. I've got the uh, red back here. Trayfuls that. I've got trayfuls of mixed lobelia. And I've still got the blue lobelia. I can show you that now. Which uh, is absolutely spot on. There's a blue lobelia there. I'm going to leave it for another week because it's just getting to a nice size. As I say, I'm never in a hurry to pot the lobelia up, the blue lobelia up. The trailing, I like I potted up a little bit earlier so it's ready for me baskets. But with the blue that's going outside in the gardens and on the borders and pots, I just let you take my time with it. That's a little bit dry, so what I'll do is I'll put it on a tray and I'll be giving them a good soaking before I go off, off down home at night. But there. Uh, I'm really pleased with the stuff that's grown in here, it's, it's absolutely rumped away. But as I say, it's um, here's the dahlias. If you remember, the tubers we had down home. We brought them back up, and of course, now it's attempt to get cracking on some cuttings. Now, the, the way I like to use uh, is to get little jiffy pots. Um, you've seen them before, I've used them quite a few times now. I used them on some suckers on the tomatoes last year, and I had some fantastic results. And they're just little plug pellets. Soak them in warm water. I'll, I'll use warm water. These have been there uh, first thing this morning before I come out of the house. Got a tray, tip some warm water in it, fill it up, and uh, that's the plug plants for the, this afternoon. And it's such an easy job to do. Uh, what I like to use is a tray, multi cell tray once again, and the plug plants will sit nice and 
firmly in there without moving. And of course, you don't go far without getting your, your rooting compounds. It doesn't matter whether you use a powder or a gel. Quite all right. Um, I've used two or three different methods and uh, each one works just as well. What I like to do with the plugs is just push a, a label through the centre of it so it just creates a little hole before you start taking your cuttings and of course once a nice nice sharp knife nice standing knife and then we can just cut away i never cut the whole base off i'll, I'll leave the bottom of the base on so that it can root away again and send more shoots up and to me i'd say that's spot on you can take the little side leaves off if you want With a knife and just leave the two leaves and that's fine for a cutting that's just below a node so we'll dip in your your hormone rooting powder press it well in you can see the water dripping out the bottom there press it well in so it's right in the bottom and there you have it we got a first class cutting there now i'll just sit in the tray the bottom of the tree there. Quite an easy job to do. Once again, push a little hole in it before you take your cutting. Find your knife. Just go down to the base of the stem and cut away. That's a nice one there. As I say, the um, if you leave the base of the stem on, it's going to send up more cuttings and just kept sending shoots up and you can just keep taking cuttings as long as you want and that's a nice little cutting there i'll take that leaf off I like to take as many leaves off as you can so you just leave yourself a nice couple of leaves that's all and that way um when you're spraying spraying daily you, you don't lose any any moisture from your plant yeah uh, hooting powder a little dip of that just to cover your root in pop them in right to the bottom press around it you can see the water coming out the out the plug plant there so let's say uh, it's well well saturated and there we have it first cast little cutting there pop them in the tray don't forget to mark them and of course this one's Hamari gold I've already taken cuttings from this one this is the second lot of cuttings I've taken from the from the Hamari gold so I like to have my pen handy and I've got some markers somewhere. Some small white ones that I had. Of course, once again, everything just, when I need it, everything disappears. There we are. I've got some nice markers down there. Make a marker. Mari Gold and them two once you get your marker in and don't forget your spray this is Camel tea by the way A good soak with that and they should have a spray container and this is just a little plastic container I like to sit on the top of them I'll have to use a smaller marker than that because uh, they're a little bit too big but uh, you, you get the you get the idea and you just a plastic container over the top and I'll take that off every day and give them a good good sprain these are the ones I've been taking through the week absolutely marvelous so I've got dahlias I've got croissants I've got them all marked and then each day I come along they're, they're absolutely marvellous and they're, they're rooting already by the look of them but uh, all I do is I come along each day and give me a good spray of chamomile tea or just plain, plain water but warm not cold you can spray it in here so it's exactly the same temperature as your greenhouse and once again just give it a light spray of chamomile tea 
works wonders in there. They'll be rooted. As I say, I've got there, I've got multiple cuttings to take here. I've got three or four at the back here, I've got three or four in here. So I'll finish this tree off later on. Um, I'll just work my way through them. Get as many cuttings as I can. I'll take cuttings right up until the end of uh, until the end of April. And then these tubers, if there is anything left on them, can just be planted outside. And you get a perfectly good good plant growth from them. But what I like to do is once they're planted out, I'll leave mine until about June. And when we stop them, that's nipping the tops out of them, so they'll branch out. And when they start branching out, I like to take some of the side shoots off the branch, which I'll do that about middle of June, uh, to the end of June, take more cuttings again, and then them cuttings become pot tubers. And that's what these little tiny little tubers here. It's a quite an easy job to do. Put them up into a small pot, and they go on the back bench here, and they'll stop there right up until the end of the year, just in that small pot. And what will happen is, uh, as it grows, it'll uh, fill, the, fill the pot with root, but your tube will be on the top. And uh, when you tip it out at the end of the year, you'll have a perfectly formed little tuber, and that's much easier for storing than some of the big monsters that you see. Uh, there's some of the three of the big ones on there on the back there are absolutely horrendous. Uh, they're massive. Of course, these are the ones I dug up out of the garden. But if you're lacking in storage space, and then the easy, easiest thing to do is to take pot tubers. But I'll show you how to do that in June. Middle to the end of June, we'll take uh, we'll take cuttings and we'll use them for pot tubers. But uh, quite an easy job to do. But uh, for the time being, let's get out of here and we'll get up and we'll try and get a few of these brassicas planted up. Okay. Right. Well, if you look down there and see uh, Roger's handiwork, and of course, he's got the three rows of uh, winsome potatoes nicely banked up, lovely. And of course, higher up, we've got our, our second lot of um, strawberries. These are the Albion strawberries that uh, were potted up in the baskets, and uh, they're grown absolutely first class. We'll be moving with them. But uh, you see, he's got all the, all the potatoes banked up. What we'll do next week, um, the whippy hoses are on the top there, nice and level. So what we'll do next week, we'll, um, we'll go along with a sprinkling of um, blood fish and bone and then that'll be it finished. The, the, the beds have been well well mucked at the beginning of the year. Um, as I say, we'll put plenty of seaweed, plenty of manure in, bone wheel and uh, now all I'll get is a, a handful of blood fish and bone and that's a finish. Because uh, in about a week's time, once we start the, the wheat hoses on them, as they get water on, they're going to start branching out and they're going to get their heads on them so you'll not get much of a chance to get in and feed them so we like to put a sprinkling of feed on them now and then that's it, that's a finish they get nothing else until we dig these up at the end of May usually about the, the May bank holiday we like to start taking them or take these up that's the first earlies but there, uh, we had a cracking crop out there last year, the Winston I was, uh, I was well pleased with them so I said to Roger we'll keep some and we'll try them again for a second year but uh, look at them now, they're well ahead, so I'm well pleased. Uh, in here, right, well, but, uh, I started cleaning out the other day. It's getting a bit of a, uh, beginning to get a bit of a junk, junk, uh, junk house in here. Because uh, everything was getting crammed in. Um, what, it, what it did start to do was get some of the bits and pieces out of the way. We had some, uh, some mint shoots that I had taken last year. On the old min plants from the garden I dug up and I split up and uh, I've got two, four, six, eight, ten. I've got ten nice, absolutely marvellous young min plants. Now there's a couple of them going out tomorrow because a few of the lads have been asking for it so we'll crack on with them. Now this is what I was on about. This, this is your, your brassicas. Now all my brassicas, if you, if you go back three weeks, four weeks ago when we sowed them and uh, that's how they should be. I absolutely spot on they're just right for for potting off and it's such an easy job um nothing is difficult about it but they uh, all my cabbages they're all the same now i've got sprouts i've got collie i've got some uh, some purple sprout and broccoli but they, they're all in need of a good potting up there's nothing nothing at all difficult about potting these up um because like i say they're one of the easiest uh, vegetables to to manage you don't need any heat whatsoever for, for brassicas. I've always said that. And what I like to do, I like to make sure my pot's pretty well full, right at the top, because I don't water from down from, from above, I always water from down below. So I'm not worried about the, 
the amount of compost that somebody puts. If you are watering from above, and then I would suggest you leave a good quarter an inch from the top. Now I've just been down both these this morning because I was running, running short of pots, so I had to go down to Shields and get myself a get myself a few. Once again, I've always got your dim tools handy. There's my what you use, you can all use an old knife, old kitchen knife, spoon, anything. As long as you can get in, get under the roots. Easy enough job. Just to break out a couple little bunches. There we are. And this is what I'm always on about. They've got lovely little root balls on them. First class little plants, just ready for potting off. And I just pop them down, put me me dip in between them, and there we have it. Absolutely cracking little plants. First class. Turn your div around. Make a decent hole, I just use my finger, press my finger in, drop your plant in to the height that you want it and you want to have your plant just sitting on the surface of the soil there and that's a first class little potted plant, yeah, you put them, doesn't matter what you use, you can, I'll, I'll be putting some of the friends and families in these, these are multi cell trays and what I'll do is I'll sow two in each of them so they have a dozen so when they come for that plant, I've got a dozen cabbage ready to plant out. Put mine, I like to put mine in the pots. Now they'll sit in them. I know people will be saying, that's a big pot that for a cabbage. <laughs> Not really. Uh, it's only beginning of April now, and they, they'll sit in that pot now until the second week in May. I never, never plant anything out any earlier than that. So from now to then, we've got six weeks. Now this is my own compost. Me and Roger tipped out one of the bins this morning, and it was, say, uh, absolutely black it was beautiful stuff and all we do we shove it through a uh, we've got an old um, bread tree we just throw it through a bread tree and any lumps and rubbish and bits of stick that still hasn't rotted down they go back into the next mug bin and then, of course we're left with a lovely crumbly mix of homemade compost that is what added to our multi-purpose compost for sharp sand and bone meal and that's what gives our three two one mixture it's my own compost I've used it for years. Uh, see if it works for you, great. And it's a damn sight cheaper than buying there uh, than buying Johnny's compost there uh, from the shop because that's it. That's all it is really. It's like a Johnny's mix. Yeah, um, but I've, I've made me on for years and uh, well chuffed with it. And these are the results that you'll get. But that that pot will be full of roots in five to six weeks' time. They'll spend four weeks in a polytunnel in the bottom polytunnel, and then they'll spend two weeks outside. On the back bench where they'll be nice and hardy and they'll be perfect for planting out you can see it first second week in may but there uh, i'll do a couple more while we're here let's just get your dibber in amongst them the little group that i pulled up you can see you'll get them in little groups never hold your brassica by the stem always hold them by the leaf if you snap a leaf off that's fine it'll, it'll still grow but never hold it by the stem just leave the stem well alone as you see get your finger in Stick it in, tamp down, and there we have it. Absolutely first class, and that's your uh, that's how we want your brassicas looking. And of course, they're going in the bottom polytunnel, but they're going in the top shelf, right over height. Now this is a problem people are having. It's too warm, and there's not enough light. And of course, your plant is going to stretch for the light. It does my way off. You've got if you're short light. That's what's going to happen, and that's why I always delay planting mine until March time. I don't want them any earlier than that, and I say they're just beginning of April, the first class now for potting off, which to me is the correct time. I never, never try to force my brassicas up, never put them in heat at all. Top shelf, cool greenhouse, plenty of light, and you'll end up with a first class tree of uh, cabbages like that, and that's all you need. Okay. Right, well I hope to help you with a few little bits and pieces today. Um, as I say, I'm going to crack on. I've got loads of potting off the row here. I've got loads of potting off the row down home. I did bring some... Um, I did bring some of the onions up before, but I uh, I can't find them. Uh, no doubt. I'll crack on tomorrow. I'll, uh, I've got... Oh, I can see them down here on the bottom bench. I've got two trayfuls of Billy Lamb onions. That's a big onions. But uh, I'll get them potted off tomorrow. I'll get the cabbages, sprouts, collies, 
I'll work my way right through them tomorrow and then I'll get myself way back down home and carry on with the bedding plants. But uh, as I say at the moment, it's, it's really busy times for I'm trying to get tomatoes done and of course next week I'm going to have to start making a sown. I've got the, um, the cucumbers, it's the squash family, it's, you know, April's fine for them. The second week in April, that's why I like planting mine, cucumbers, um, courgettes, pumpkins, anything like that that you want to sow. Melons, melons are waiting in a couple of weeks. Usually about the third week and fourth week in April when I sow my melons. And of course my sweet corn, I'll be sown, I'll probably make a, a sown next week, second week in April. Which once again, if I give it six weeks, pot them off into nine centimetre pots like that, the sweet corn, and they'll be ready for planting out into the second week in May, which uh, up north here is fine for them. I may plant a few in the bottom polytunnel again like I did last year, but we found out we've got a better crop planting them outside. Uh, because we had quite a good summer last year, it wasn't too bad, um, but we'll see how it goes anyway. But at, at the moment, I'm well chuffed because my teachers are growing away really strong. All our bedding plants are romping away, and of course, for our, uh, our brassicas are first class. For onions, champion, and the tomatoes as well. The tomatoes are coming out in years at the moment. I've got there. Uh, I started off with four varieties, and of course, I've, uh, I've getting different seeds sent from different people. Uh, Carl Nolan sent us up some uh, cherry tomatoes, absolutely spot on call. Then um, them little red ones, they're great. Uh, red Robin they're called, and I've just potted them up last night. Just really tiny little plants, but they're lovely, they're branching out really nice. I'm going to grow them down home, uh, because as I say with my benches being in the home greenhouse, I've only got a couple of foot of headroom, so they'll grow perfect in me, in me home greenhouse. But uh, up here it'll be Plum, Ilsa Craig, Moneymaker, and there's uh, some garden delight and two or three different varieties enough for everybody but they uh, well pleased with that but uh, i thought i'd get cracking up here today get a little bit of video on because i know a lot of you have uh, been asking where i've been but it's just been manic here i've managed to sow a couple of rows of carrots here in amongst the garlics and maybe just get to show you that next week and um, but for the time being it's the only get us online let us know how we're doing we're cracking on i'm i'm hoping to make a longer video next week uh, maybe it's on a Thursday, I'll get up Thursday afternoon and start early and I'll, um, I'll hopefully I'll get a longer video made. But for the time being, I'm just going to pop off and get this online tonight if I can. And just to let you know that we're, uh, we're busy bees, we're cracking on with everything. But uh, if you want to keep up with one more Facebook page, it's Jeff Holman on the plot. And uh, catch one there. Any questions or any, anything you want to ask me about, get one more plot and we'll... Uh, We'll try and get back as quick as we can. But for the time being, I know it's a short video, but uh, we're trying to cram as much as we can into, our, into what hours we have. Um, honestly, to tell you the truth, I don't know how I managed when I worked because uh, I'm retired now and uh, I still haven't got enough hours in a day. It's just um, it's just manic at the moment, but uh, we we'll love it. We're getting by. Meanwhile, just say, uh, as I say, we're plodding on. We're, we're, we're doing as best we can in the situation that we're in. Hopefully within a few weeks time we'll start to come out of this lockdown and we'll start, uh, not that we'll start mingling again, but we'll we'll be keeping ourselves to ourselves as we have done over the last year. And hopefully by the summer time it'll improve and we might, uh, might get a few guests back to the garden again. Okay, so until next week, um, I'm going to knock off and then I'll hopefully I'll get a good video online for you next week. Okay, see you all again soon. Bye for now.